Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation in a very radical way. So we have 4 over x plus the square root of x squared plus x minus 1 over x minus the square root of x squared minus x equals 3 over x. And we're going to be looking for real values of x. So let's get started. When you get a problem like this, sometimes people think, should we make a common denominator? Well, if you look at the denominators, you'll probably notice that they are not conjugates. So making a common denominator may not always be a good idea. We're going to be using a different approach, and that is rationalizing each denominator separately. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to multiply the first one by the conjugate of the denominator, and that is going to be x times the square root of x squared plus x. And the bottom is going to be from difference of two squares, x squared minus the quantity, x squared plus x. The second expression will be multiplied by the denominator, uh, the conjugate of the denominator. Since numerator is 1, I can just write that and multiply that by the bottom, which gives me from difference of two squares, x squared minus the quantity, x squared minus x. And this is equal to 3 over x. Now, notice that x equals 0 is not a solution here. That information will be helpful because it makes it undefined, right? So we have to exclude that if it ever comes up. So now we have a simpler denominator for both of them. x squared minus x squared is going to cancel out and we're going to end up with a negative x here. And that negative x actually can be simplified. Let's, let's just assume that we multiply the top and the bottom by negative 1 like this here and here and so that we can take care of the bottom one because it's going to come out negative x, but I want to make it positive. So the numerator is going to look like this. Negative 4 times the quantity x minus square root of x squared plus x. And this whole thing is going to be divided by x, not negative x, minus here we don't have to worry about it because it comes out as x. The numerator is this one and that's divided by x. Now notice that all the denominators are the same, so we can totally forget about them. In other words, multiply both sides by x, and remember that x does not equal 0. So this gives us negative 4 times the quantity x minus the square root of x squared plus x, minus x minus the square root of x squared minus x equals 3. So here, let's go ahead and distribute to negative 4. Negative 4x plus 4 times the square root of x squared plus x, minus x minus the square root of x squared minus x equals 3. Great. Now, what I'd like to do here is I want to combine like terms as, mu as much as possible, leave the radical on one side, and then square both sides. So that, that way I can just simplify the expression, right? Let's go ahead and do that. So here, I'm going to be getting something like this. 4 times the square root of x squared plus x minus square root of x squared minus x. Negative 4x minus x is going to give me negative 5x. If I add both sides, then we'll have 5x plus 3. Now let's go ahead and square both sides here. If we do, we're going to get rid of some of the radicals, but we have to do that one more time if you want to get rid of all the radicals. But I'm going to be using a more radical approach here. So let's continue. This gives us 16 times the quantity x squared plus x minus 8 times. Now I'm going to be multiplying these two radicals and their conjugates. So the product is going to be x to the fourth minus x squared under the radical. And notice that I use difference of two squares one more time plus x squared minus x, which comes from b squared. And the right hand side can be written as 25 x squared plus 30 x plus 9. That's just like a perfect square. Now, let's go ahead and distribute. From here, I'm getting 16x squared plus 1x squared gives me 17x squared. Then I get 16x minus x, that is 15x. And then minus 8 times the quantity x to the fourth minus x squared. And the whole thing is equal to 25x squared plus 30x plus 9. Now, this is what I'd like to do. I want to put everything on the same side and write it uh, as a sum and set it equal to zero. 
So let's go ahead and put everything on the right hand side. I'm going to be subtracting 17x squared from 25. So that's going to give me 8x squared. Subtract 15x from 30x. That's going to give you positive 15x. And then my, I don't have any constant terms on the left hand side. The only constant I have is going to be 9. So I'm going to write that. And I'm adding this radical term here to both sides. So that's going to give me plus 8 times the quantity or the square root of x to the fourth minus x squared and the whole thing is equal to zero. Great. Now you might be asking at this point, why didn't we isolate the radical and square both sides? Well, if you do it, you're going to get a cortic. Okay, you can try that. Well, that cortic is actually going to turn into a cubic because you're going to be getting 64 x to the fourth. That way they're going to cancel out from both sides. So you're going to end up with a cubic, which is not very easy to solve. The numbers are going to be getting larger and so on and so forth. That's why we want to use a different approach here and it's quite possible. And here's my approach. I'm going to be looking at this expression. Okay, a radical expression can never be negative, right? If we're looking for real numbers. X is a real number. So 8 times the square root of x to the fourth minus x squared is always greater than or equal to zero. Great. What about the quadratic? Well, this quadratic is somewhat special because if you look at its discriminant and as you know, the discriminant of a quadratic gives you a lot of good information and that is given by b squared minus 4ac so b squared minus 4 times 8 times 9 and that is going to be actually 36 times 8 which is 288 so you're going to notice that the discriminant is negative here what is that supposed to mean that means you're dealing with a quadratic with no real solutions or no x-intercepts which means our parabola will stay above the x-axis right and that means that it can never be zero. In other words, this quadratic has to be greater than zero, not even equal, right? So this is like a positive quantity. This is a non-negative quantity. Their sum will never be zero. What's that supposed to mean? We've, we've done all this work for nothing? Well, not really, or maybe that's the case. But here's the conclusion. Since this is impossible, there are no real solutions. Unfortunately, this equation has no real solutions. Now, if you proceeded and went with the quadratic, uh, I mean the quartic and the cubic, you would probably find some solutions, but guess what? That real solution is going to be an extraneous solution. That's also why that's not a good idea to proceed because you're going to be getting some extraneous solutions which you have to check and checking that would not be very, very easy. So therefore, this equation has no real solutions as a conclusion. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.